good with it in the hood with it welcome back to the collective clips where you already know we get it in but before we get it in let's hit that like and subscribe button ding put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content i am kicking and i highly appreciate all the support man we're going up on this channel and it's all because of you and for that i am very humbled and i want to say gracias thank you guys very much Shao, right so trip out man when's it ever gonna stop one never knows does one but lately what's been going on there's a trend there's a pattern here that's been heating up in the last couple months man and i'm seeing a lot of northern california and southern california rappers go at it homes head to head rap beef banging on wax disrespecting each other um using their musical talents using their verbiage using their vernacular using their slanguage whatever you want to call it to disrespect each other see back in the days we kept it to the streets. There was no social media. There was no uh, anything like that. It was fucking hit me on the pager if it's major. It was you. Had, you literally had to see the opposition or individuals um, and say what you had to say. Get off your chest what you had to get off your chest and get off where you were mad at right then and there. There was no sneak dissing, subliminals, um, rah rah shit. It was all action because it spoke way louder than words, right? But advancement demands change, right? So in order for people to advance, things change. And what's changed is social media. Social media has it has made it easier for people to gangbang, people that necessarily wouldn't be in them streets, people that necessarily um, don't like to go outside and carry weaponry and things of that nature. Um, they can do it from behind a keyboard. They can do it from the other side of a phone. They can do it in several different ways, whereas it's safe for them. They take safety precautions, indubitably, right? But at the end of the day, man, does it really make you a gangster to talk shit um, on a song or, you know, on social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube? Not really, right? There's a lot of people that look at that two different ways. One way, hey, homie, as long as the homeboys are putting out there what they want to put out there, that's all good, right? And there's a lot of people like, nah, no, mm -mm, I call bullshit, right? If you're going to handle something, just handle something. Don't broadcast it to the media because anything that you put out there, once it's made public, it's public. And everybody hears it. So if you're take, if you're making vital threats, if you're talking about cases, if you're talking about things that you're going to do or, or things that you want to see done, best believe law enforcement and others have already looked at that. They're looking at that. So now if anything happens to that individual you're threatening or you're clowning on or you're capping on or whatever the case may be, you're going to be the first person they come look, knocking at your door and then you're going to open up your eyes and there's going to be guns, black badges, blue suits and white guys, brother. And no coffee, right? Just handcuffs. So you have to watch what you say on social media. You have to learn how to toe that line and speak your piece and be heard. But at the same time, not say too much. You understand? There's, there's just things you can and cannot say. Now, for the past, I'd say four or five years, there's been a northern presence on social media. And the northern presence, there's been active northerners or allegedly active Northanials. And then there's been non-actives like myself that are just kind of giving you clecha, giving you game, telling you about the stories that I've been through, um, some of the homeboys that I know or I've been around, and things of that nature. Now, at the same time, I can understand a group that is very clandestine and secretive and very active, man, not feeling that. You know, of an understanding that we can't let people speak for us, especially people that we don't have in good standings or in a good light, because they might feel that it's misconstrued or their message is not being conveyed the way they want it to be. Now, I've always been told in the way I was laced up when I was active, man, is that Norteños don't speak. They just produce. They just handle. Right. But times have changed. Like I said, nowadays with social media and making it so easy, it's hard to not you know, voice your opinion on social media and, 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 and push your movement, push your group. In some cases, it helps your, it helps your group to advance, but in some cases it kind of hinders them because it puts on full blast what you don't want the average everyday motherfucker to know. That's just period, plain and simple. You know, for the longest time, the Norteño movement did not take to social media. There's always going to be internet bangers. They don't count. There's always going to be those that talk shit in chats and uh, do SKs and NKs and things of that nature, again, they don't count. Because if they were really seasoned Lowry's and really about their business, 
They wouldn't rah-rah. They would just get off where they were mad at. That's plain and simple. There's no other way to put it. When you constantly are talking about you're a gangster and you do this and you've done that and you want everyone to know, then more than likely you're not trying to do that no more or you want everyone to know because the loudest one in the room is usually the weakest one. That's truth, right? Now, it's different to tell your stories, have a good time with it, educate people, entertain people. That's one thing. But when you're disrespecting people constantly and you're co trying to cause, uh, you know, individualism, separation, um, indecisiveness, guerra, war, um, you know, that could come back to bite you. That could come back to be something that you don't want it to be. So lately, I've been seeing a bigger Norteño presence on social media. They're letting their voices be heard. Finally, man, we're seeing, you know, Lazy Boy pulled up to No Jumper, the first active interview they're saying. Um, I'm seeing several Northerners starting podcasts, um, albeit they're not saying too much. They're just talking music. They're talking rap. They're talking life. Um, at the same time, that can be misconstrued as them speaking on politics or them speaking on things they shouldn't. But to each their own, man. You know, there's always going to be those people that see one thing as cool and see one thing as bad. And it's up to you to decipher what you believe. You know, what's been going on, though, um, I'd say in the last year is Chito Ranas from Sacramento. Now, he's an upstate Southsider, not to be misconstrued with a down South Southerner, a uh, Southsider from, you know, Bakersfield on back. We're talking about an upstater and the upstate movement is much different than down South, albeit, man. They fly under the same radar. Um, they got a lot of the same uh, idealisms and function, you know, up under one bandera. But at the same time, it's very different. These are the guys that are on frontline status. These are the guys that have to wake up every morning and see Norteños on the streets, see their opposition, see fucking individuals that hate them to the fullest and they hate to the fullest and have to fucking toe that line and move smooth. Now, there's always going to be those, oh, we're wrecking the Norteños. They don't do nothing. It, Bro, it's going to go back and forth and everyone's going to argue. At the end of the day, um, two men arguing is like two hyenas arguing. It's all the same damn thing. It's an argument. No one's going to win, bro. Oh, we're one up. We got one more body than you did. Are you? Your homeboy's locked up for life, so you're actually one down, bro. It just, it, it's never a good look, but you can't tell people shit, man. They're going to feel a certain way they're going to feel, and that's it. When I was young, I thought the same exact way. I was going to do what the fuck I wanted to do. There wasn't nobody uh, giving me glitch, giving me game. No older homeboy that could tell me different because I thought I knew it all, right? Don't we all think we know it all when we're young? And then we grow and we get older and we get wiser and we get grayer, homes, And then we understand the game and the fucking glitch they were giving us. We should have utilized it and would be a lot more further advanced in our life and in the cause. So... Chito Ranas, an upstater from Sacramento Howe Park. Let me give you the breakdown on it. You know, Southsiders have had a presence in Sacramento for a very long time. There was 47th Street back in the days, which is no longer around anymore. And there was a lot of individuals that were locked up from 47th Street that were putting in that work, that were handling their business. I know because I was on the yard. <clears throat> excuse me. I was on the yard with individuals from 47th Street. Sacra, right? Um, South Sac. Now, there was also another group, another gang, man, on the north side of Sacra called Hal Park, which the rapper Chito Ranas is allegedly from. Okay, and for a long time, they held it down at that park. But if you ask any Norteños from Sacra, they never felt intimidated. They were never pressured or pushed up on. Um, they felt that the Valtos just had their flag planted in that one area, and it was all good. They were surrounded. They weren't going nowhere. Again, like I said, it's arguments on both sides. Who's right? Who's wrong? In this case, I'm not taking any sides, bro. You know, I understand how the Norteños feel about the upstaters. If you ask a Norteño, a righteous, active Norteño, he's going to say, hey, homie, the Southsiders pose zero threat. They're not out there like that. They're only out there at night. They ain't moving in the daytime. And then my question to them is, well, why aren't you out there at night moving when they're moving? If it's that serious, right? Now, when you ask the Southerners from upstate, they're putting it down. They're planting flags everywhere. The takeover is real, right? But to be totally honest with you, man, that takeover or that movement started um, a long time ago. See, there's always been Southsiders up north in Northern California. It didn't just happen. They didn't just trickle in. They've always been there, right? We just didn't really <clears throat> recognize them as that group or entity putting in too much work because they were so spread out. Now, over the years, there became more Southsiders. There became a lot more Southsiders. And then their presence started to be noticed. 
They were wiggling during the daytime. They were out there at night. I'd run into them at the fairs, at the concerts, in certain uh, uh, areas. Little Caesars Pizza, pan, pan, right? I'd run into cats. Um, but again, the way I wiggled was as long as you respected me as a man and you didn't disrespect what I was doing, we were going to be good, bro. We were going to mind our own business and handle our business. Now, there were some times when it was on and cracking. There were certain individuals that were putting in that work, that were getting headhunted, that were getting looked for. Because they posed a threat to the safety and security of the cause of the gente, of the people. You know, there's always going to be hitters and shooters from every different group. Doesn't matter, Holmes, what people think. Oh, we're fucking putting in all that work and these vaultas ain't about it. Uh, that's a lie. There's motherfuckers putting in work from everywhere. Black wood, brother. Right? Uh, native. Uh, Asian. Doesn't matter. There's hitters. This is California. Everybody born with a little bit of thug in them. Right? That's just how it is. So Chito Rana's being an upstate Southsider. Got a little bit of shine, man. He got a little bit of shine, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. The first time that I ever heard of him, he was in a parole probation office getting ran up on by a northerner. Um, there were some words being exchanged, and then there was a lot of controversy over that video clip that was dropped on social media. Again, whoever dropped it was trying to show him getting punked or getting clowned on. Um, the way I took it and the way I seen it was you know, there was other ways around it. Of course, man, if a vault was running his neck, you know, and I don't know if he was, but if he was, vaultas are going to get mad, uh, get off where they're mad at, but there was no fist thrown. There was no just handle your business and just rush. It was more so kind of clowning, recording just to make the vault look bad um, when it could have easily been like, okay, all right, I see you and wait till he came outside and then got off. Right? So I'm not going to wolf and disrespect people and saying they didn't handle it correctly. I'm saying I would have handled it back in the days differently. You know, you see somebody you don't like or somebody that's fucking running his, his dick sucker. Then what you do is you just wait, sit in the bushes into his gut gushes. Right. And that's it. Now, um, whatever that that's what first got my attention. I ran into a homeboy, the Sakura. He put me up on game on his music. I listened to his music. I liked his music. I said, all right, cool. Because you got to understand, I'm not active, man. I'm listening to whoever the fuck I want to listen to. And here's the fucking kicker. When I was, I was listening to whoever I wanted to listen to. Because ain't nothing like them summer nights. Or the little Rob. I was doing my thing, right? But that's me as an individual. It didn't mean I was any less downer than all the active other homeboys that were banging. It just meant, bro, I, had, I was on my own program, my own thing. And uh, when my number was called, then I did what I had to do, right? But it didn't mean I didn't like music. So... People are using this music nowadays to disrespect each other. So about a year and a half ago, two years ago, Chito Ranas got locked up. Okay, for the first time. And while he was incarcerated, his brother decided, you know, I don't know if it's his real blood brother or just his camarada, which he called his brother because that was his taita, his close homeboy. Whatever the case may be, he decided to go to the Shark City. He decided to go to the 408 Sanjo. Now, I advise against people that are not from San Jose going to San Jose because San Jose ain't what you think it is. San Jose has always been a Norteño stronghold. There's always been a lot of gangsterism going on. There's always been a lot of sharks willing to take a chunk up out of you. You know, it's jaws around that motherfucker. If you don't know how to wiggle around the city of San Jose, you could end up on the east side, the west side, the south side, the north side, homes, and then you could be no side. Because Volta's out there ain't playing. They're really with the activities. There's really a lot of gang banging going on, north and south. There's a presence of everybody, right? But it's always going to be the majority Norteños. That's just the way the city of San Juan is. Okay, and there's always going to be vocals that feel a certain way. It's the way they're laced. It's in the Awa out there. It's the way people do it. They really are gang banging in the city of San Jose, which is located in the South Bay area, right? Some people don't think it's the Bay. It's the Bay. It's the South Bay. And the motherfuckers out there are hitting people. So Jalisco who is from Sacramento, How Park, Davario, not well known, but was known enough to be affiliated with Chito Ranas or his brother, decided to pull up to a spot, man, and post it on social media. You know, he dropped his location and he was murdered that night. Um, quit, right? And I remember Chito Ranas dropping videos from prison, crying and feeling some certain way. And ain't nothing wrong with the man shedding a little bit of tears, man. When you lose a, co a close homeboy, a camarada, a brother, you know, you're frustrated. You know, your hands are cuffed. Tell me you're locked up in prison. Vatos are out there fucking murking your people. You can't get, you can't retaliate. There's nothing you could do. Um, but bite the bullet, homes, and do your time. That's part of life. See, that's the hardship of being incarcerated. You're not in control. You know, maybe if he was out doing the right thing, then maybe his homeboy wouldn't have pulled up out there to some home. Maybe he would have been like Charlie, bro. 
it ain't a good look. Or maybe they would have pulled up together and it have been two bodies instead of one. Whatever the case may be, Chito started to go a little bit crazy. And when he got out of prison, we all seen him. I don't know if he was off scante. I don't know if he was just fucking in depression. But whatever it was, it wasn't the guy he is now. And he was making a lot of bad moves. He got out like, fuck parole. I'm a soldier, right? Straight on the run. Um, just looked totally different. Was sucked up. Just a lot. He had a lot going on. And I think it's a lot of it stemmed from losing a close homeboy. And, you know, he made a lot of accusations that a lot of people were not looking out for him. A lot of people turned their back on him. Hey, that's prison life, bro. That's what happens. Um, so around the same time that happened, a Norteño, a well-known young Norteño coming up in the rap game, passed away. Okay, was not killed by Southsiders or Southerners. Um, you know, was actually killed allegedly by his own people uh, for whatever reason. Whether it was a, a, a business deal gone bad or some haterism. Whatever, man, how it worked out. But his name was Little TYS out of Sakura. And he was coming up in the game. He was starting to do a lot of numbers on social media. His music was being heard and felt. He was the next one up in SAC, right? As far as northern Mexicans. And uh, his life was cut short. And it's unfortunate. Anytime a youngster gets killed, Jalisco as well as Little TYS. You know, two guys that are stepping up out of a city, out of the capital city. And trying to make music and trying to make feria for their families. Um, they die young. You know, in Sacramento, you die young. Homes in San Jose, you die young. That's just what it is. Them cities are known for being very active and political. And people are dying young out there. They're walking around the streets with choppers. It's what it is, right? If you don't know, you haven't been out there, and you think, and you're sleeping on Sacra or Sanjo homes, you're really fucked up in the head because they're really out there certified stepping. Lefty, right? They're out there stepping for reals. So anyways, um, he dies, and Chito gets out and decides to start disrespecting that dead man Decides to start putting him in songs, mentioning his jefita, um, just mentioning him. And I remember I did a video on it and I felt like, you know, all the respect I, you know, given Chito and talked about him and hoped that he got well. And and for what I've seen, I, I was like, wow, bro, I can't respect that. I can't acknowledge that. Acknowledge me. I couldn't. I couldn't. That was misrepresented. He was misrepresenting himself because a real gangster, a real Volta who's really about it doesn't do that. Right. Especially disrespect the dead. And especially when you and your people are not the ones who did it. How can you claim and talk shit about someone who passed and clown on him and talk about he's gone and his family's crying and his mother's crying and and you didn't put in that work. You didn't get him. You're still one down. Your brother's still also dead and you never retaliated. You never caught one for that. Or, or maybe he did. One never knows, right? I'm just saying you can't. You're disrespecting someone's murder that you didn't have nothing to do with, basically. You know, it just doesn't make no sense. And now it just becomes uh, uh, just all masa, right? Tamales. That's what it becomes, tamal. You're just talking fucking masa because in real life, if you were really putting in that work and really doing it, you wouldn't be out here fucking trying to get a record deal. You'd be really inside prison, you know, doing maquina or rutina, you know? And that's just it. That's just plain simple. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. Now... Subsequently, since then, Rico Too Smooth, who's a rapper from Broderick, man, Sakra, West Sac, right? Um, you know, for a long time, I saw this guy, you know, when he first came out, he was really gang related, really, um, really Sac, right? Really pushing that Sac movement, that Norteño movement. Um, and I respected it. At the same time, man, um, it was just another Northern rapper that I thought was going to keep himself confined to a box because that's what happens when you put a label on your fucking rapisms. You know, you're usually only going to get a certain uh, uh, fanfare. You're only going to get a certain amount of people watching you. But I started to see him over these last few years grow. You know, change his attitude. Um, speak some glecha. Try to enlighten people. Educate them. Help the youth. Different things. And I was proud to say, hey, that Valto, I'm seeing him change. He's becoming more seasoned in the game. He's going to the next level. Not only he's did the street shit, the gang banging shit, but now he's advanced to being a maestro, to being a teacher to the youth and to the gente. Um, that's a good thing. That's always a good thing. Um, uh, you know, uh, change, uh, deba uh, advancement demands change. You know, it's, it's truth. It says it right there on his album cover. Um, he was spitting that knowledge you couldn't get in college, or maybe you could, right? But the other day, he drops a fucking disc record, right? And in this disc record, he's disrespecting Jalisco, talking about his murder, disrespecting Chitorranas. And a lot of people are tripping. Oh, shit. 
the Norteños are going in. They actually went, pulled up to Howe Park, which is allegedly the barrio of Chito Ranas and Jalisco, and did a video there. Now, people are tripping out. Wow, the Norteños did that. Ain't nothing new, bro. I've seen several times where Southsiders have pulled up to Norteño barrios and also did, uh, you know, diss songs and, and talk shit. See, it goes back and forth. People think if they pull up in your hood or your barrio, that's the ultimate disrespect. Basically, it's showing you, you Vatos ain't really out here like that. You Vatos ain't nada. Look, we pulled up in force, bro. Where were you at? Get off where you're mad at. Now, they did that. You can't take that from them. But also, it doesn't get anyone any brownie points. All it shows, bro, is that you're alerting everyone to your presence. And, and it is what it is. Now, some people are like, fuck it. If the funk's on, if it's on, it's on. Now, this is what I got to say about the little disc record and all that, right? First of all, it's good music. Um, second of all, I don't support the message because anytime you're disrespecting a dead person, um, it's just not a good look, right? On both sides. But I think Chito's been running his neck more so, saying a lot more in his songs, sneak dissing and disrespecting people to where the Norteños finally felt, you know what? Fuck this, homes. We're tired. You know, you're not going to keep belittling the people and, and throwing subliminals out there or straight shots without getting, uh, um, you know, retaliated on. Now, of course, in the gang underlife, we think retaliation is in the streets. That's where we're from, right? That's where you're supposed to do it. But um, banging on wax sometimes, you know, gang banging on the internet or sometimes, sometimes it does have, I guess it's positive attributes. One of the positive things is no one dies, right? But sometimes people can feel disrespected and feel a certain way. And then later on, someone does. All this banging on wax does and all this going back and forth does is alert, alert the authorities to the conflict, the confusion and the problem, right? So when Vato start to get raided or get Rico, two smooth acts, right? And shit starts happening you can't blame no one but yourself because what you did is you alerted, you know, them alphabet boys. You alerted the local authorities to the conflict and tension. And again, like I said, if someone comes up short, if someone fucking gets clapped on, you're pretty much done. You're pretty much involved because you incited that. It's an ugly look, man. That's why you have to toe that line. You know, the people that are going crazy, you're going to have a lot of Southerners that are tripping, you know. Hey, them Vatos from up north, man, they're fucking disrespecting Chito. Chito's the one, right? Um, Chito got known, and let's just keep it real. He was known locally in the Sacramento area, but outside of that area, no one really knew about his music until, and I'm a, hey, I hate to say, it, but I'm gonna keep it real until Swifty Blue kind of put him in the limelight. And now subsequently since then, now they got beef. And now I'm hearing Chito got beef with Lefty and I'm hearing Chito got beef with OTR Records and whatever they got going on, that's their business. But when you start to have beef with every single person, you have to look within yourself and realize, Holmes, the only way to pull away from that and the only way to advance and do your thing, man, is to not recognize and not uh, get involved in the back and forth. You know, this right here, um, seeing the Norteños do this literal disrespect, naming names and saying that, bro, I haven't seen that ever. Okay. I've heard a lot of Norteño music, man. Believe me, I was part of compilations. I was part of sitting in studios while homeboys were recording when I was active. I was all in that mix. Darkroom Familia days, Low Down days, Merced. Merced was really popping back then, right? Um, I would sit in the boots and listen to homeboys rap, and I would hear disrespect towards the Southerners and little slight disses, and I would be like, ooh, wait, you know, that's just not my get down, but I can't tell anyone else how to fucking conduct their program to each man their own, you know? But I would listen... And so, yes, there has been disrespect on both sides going back and forth, you know, for a long time. A lot of banging on wax, a lot of shit going down in music. Um, did I ever think it was cool? Absolutely not. You know, I've always been of an understanding that if I'm mad at you, then we just fight, bro. We're not going to just talk back and forth. You know, I've done that before. I'm not hypocritical. I've, I've woofed back and forth with people here on the Internet, you know, held my ground, you know, staked my claim and been like, hey, man, I got to defend myself. But realize that it, it just... It was not worth it. There was nothing coming out of it. Nobody was winning. So I had to be the bigger man and walk away from the situation. This is what I've done. This is the way I'm going to conduct myself. Because I can't sit here and give you knowledge you can't get in college and educate people when I was acting less than. That's just facts, right? Let's trip out. With this Rico Too Smooth Chito Rana shit, um, that's Sacramento business. Um, that's Norteño Southside or business upstaters. You know, there's a lot of volatiles from Southern California. I've seen Bozo, right? Bozo did an interview the other day, and Bozo always disrespects the North. No matter how he says it, he tries to act like he's super intelligent, but let's fucking state facts here. 
The Vato disrespects the Norte. He has, he feels some type of way. Bro, I don't know how vicious he got on the level two yard, but look it. Um, I could tell him this. You know, if you're not so concerned with the Vatos and they're like China to your USA, like he said, and they don't affect you, then why are you always speaking upon it? You know, why are you always shedding light on it or or you have to minimize their contribution to the Rasa cause like they're fucking aliens? They're like they're not brown men. You got to respect brown men for being brown men no matter what side they're from. That is bozo activities. When you're sitting there constantly ridiculing and talking about, hey, homie, they don't want no part of us or they're not like us and we don't even acknowledge them. But you're constantly acknowledging them. You're just looking like a fool. You're looking like Boo Boo the fool or Bozo the clown, right? I'm just being, hey, and I don't have no beef with this dude. And I'm not going to sit here and say no disrespect because it's disrespectful what I said. But when I see someone sticking their whole fucking pata in their mouth and it smells like toenails, I'm going to keep it real. You know, it just doesn't, it's not a good look, bro. You know, and all this back and forth, north and south shit, just when we're advancing to take a step forward as gente, as raza, man, hoping that the inside will control the outside. Um, I'm here to say, man, this end of hostilities and this true shit is looking a lot less, a lot more flimsy than it ever has. These youngsters are disregarding that, not respecting it, and they're really out on the streets fucking saying, fuck the truth, fuck the end of hostilities and all that. They're handling their business, man. Um, and I can't be mad at them. And again, bro, I don't fucking... I'm not trying to glorify that gang shit and, and say it's cool because it's not when people lose lives, but it's about to start getting funky, man. You know, it starts on wax and it ends on fucking pavement. I'm telling you, I see it. Anyways, with that being said, you know, the Chito Ranas, we're going to see if he claps back and he has a diss song and it's just going to keep on going on until there's a body. That's usually how it goes. You know, with Rico Too Smooth, I think he gets a lot of criticism um, and gets looked at a certain way because he's an Africano that's a Norteño. But I grew up with a lot of homeboys that were black, right? And to me, man, a homeboy was a homeboy and that was just it. I didn't give a fuck what color you were. You could be pink. As long as you didn't stick your fucking elbow up your asshole like Wes Watson, we're going to be all good in the hood. Shouldn't be nothing up your ass but a pack of camel lights and a pedazo. Anything else, bro, is diddy-ish. No diddy, right? We don't do that Meek Millish shit around here. So we do the militant, not the millish. So that's just what it is. Anyways, man, let me know how you guys feel. Do you guys think it's just bullshit or do you think fucking... You know, there's going to be a lot of youngsters that'll be like, yeah, nah, the homies, well, you know, there's disrespect and they like that shit. They feel like it makes them feel good. But I'm here to tell you, man, anyone that's with the poop butt shit and you're super gangster and you're gang banging, bro, <laughs> you ain't shit, bro. Look, I'm telling you right now, bro, real homeboys know, um, keep it so that way you don't get, and then when you can handle and then move on, it's what it is and get your groove on. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, the struggle, the strive. In order for us to advance as a raza, we have to work on ourselves and our gente first, man. And realize that nobody is laughing with us. They're laughing at us, bro. Bang, bang. The gun.